Well, this programme has never been one to poo-poo other quiz shows, and if other programmes come up with new and original ideas, then we're only too happy uh, to steal them. And uh, so it is, with uh, this traditional sense of fair uh, plagiarism uh, very much in mind, that we present our own version of Mastermind, featuring the same rules, uh, the same format, and the same spotlight. And our uh, first contestant is Mr. Ian David Hislop, who is a magazine salesman from Clapham. <laughs> and uh, your specialist subject is... The life and fibs of Geoffrey Archer. <laughs> your questions on the life and fibs of Geoffrey Archer start now. What is an archer and where does the term originate? £2,000. It came from a, a brown envelope full of money he gave to a prostitute he'd never met before to try and get her to go abroad. Correct. To whom did Archer say it was really like a breath of spring to meet you? The late Robert Maxwell. Takes one to no one. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. After awarding Kathleen Burnett first prize in a short story competition, what did Archer do? Steal the story and pretend it was his own in the next collection. Uh, almost right. He included her storyline in his own collection, A Twist in the Tale. What false claim did Archer make about winning the Louth by-election? He said he was the youngest MP ever in the House of Commons, which he wasn't. He was the fourth. He, he was, in fact, the fourth youngest, correct. By walking out onto a bridge in Toronto, what trouble did Archer walk into? Uh, he took three suits from the shop with him. He was arrested on suspicion of shoplifting, yes. Uh, which post, which never existed, did Archer claim his father had held? Um, he said his father was a, a, a colonel in the Somerset Light Infantry. He'd won a Distinguished Conduct Medal. Um, which he hadn't, and he said his father was also consul of Singapore, which he, he wasn't. Uh, whereas his father, in fact, was a caterer in Brighton and a bigamist. <laughs> uh, what was special about the £57 million Archer claimed to have raised for Kurdistan through his Simple Truth concert? Well, he didn't raise 57 he raised about seven, I think. Correct. On his visit to Kurdistan, how did Archer greet the assembled crowd? Um, he tried to do a bit of Kurdish and he said, Bastard Kurdistan. Is correct. Uh, <laughs> Before buying what, did Archer famously not talk to his wife? Um, Anglia shares, Correct. just as the company was about to be taken over. During an athletics race at Oxford in October 1963, what achievement propelled Archer into the national press? He was hit by a discus, <laughs> amusingly. And stretched off uh, whilst competitors cheered. <laughs> uh, how precisely did Monica Coughlin... I've finished, so I'll start with the next contestant. <laughs> Uh, who is a Mr. Uh, Paul James Merton, a former civil servant from Tooting. Your specialist subject, Mr. Merton, is? Uh, the absurd revelations in the tabloid press between 1990 and 1995. Uh, your questions on the absurd revelations in the tabloid press between 1990 and 1995 start now. What was fired at an Airbus A340 at 500 miles an hour to test its durability? Frozen chicken. Is correct. <laughs> who repeatedly dialed police in West Virginia? East Virginia. <laughs> a tomato plant no. is the right answer. How did the Irish Territorial Army in County Wicklow compensate for having no bullets? Uh, uh, shouting bang. They shouted bang when they fired. <laughs> the Amazonian blue-fronted parrot killed in Oxford by an irate Mark Leach had annoyed him by repeatedly saying what? Uh, Mark Leach, his name. Mark Leach. Is okay. correct. Yeah. Uh, what did coach uh, Randy Brown offer his American football team as an incentive to play better? His wife. Sex with his wife. <laughs> what was uh, Don Snellgrove of the US Air Force doing that caused him to crash his 12, pound, uh, 12 million pound plane over Iraq? He was having a shit into a teapot. <laughs> uh, I can't give you that. He was trying to piss into a sponge. And... <laughs> uh, Which is dessert. What... <laughs> what crime did Colin Sad commit? Uh, he was trying to have a shit into a teapot. <laughs> I know he stole people's cars and cleaned them and bought them back and then disappeared. He stole people's cars, washed them, polished them and returned them to their owners. Uh, John Bloor superglued his buttocks together because he mistook the glue for what? Nesquik. <laughs> his hemorrhoid cream. Oh. <laughs> what was odd about the gorilla that a group of Mexicans attempted to smuggle out of Miami? Uh, it was a gorilla in a, in a man's suit disguised as a gorilla. <laughs> it was a man in a gorilla suit. It was an undercover government agent in a gorilla suit. <laughs> what piece of music does a musical condom play when it splits? Um, I, I used to love you, but it's all over now. <laughs> um, yes, yes, sir, that's my baby. Um, uh, Beethoven. I've started, so I'll finish. Is, uh, is the right answer. <laughs> Why? Why were Paul Osborne's racing pigeons so successful? They had bikes. 
he fed them on cannabis. Oh. Is the but they had bikes as well. Did they? Yes. And that concludes our brave, <laughs> if ultimately misguided, attempt at our mastermind round, which brings the present score to uh, uh, undreamed of heights because uh, Paul and Eddie are now under dizzy uh, 23, whilst Ian and Richard are virtually suffering from vertigo with 24.